the idea of this the idea of this uh, of this recording came when we were both engaged in this kind of argument on Facebook with some really wild <laughs> wild right. young Americans on the lower who had very liberal very lift uh, and they were on, saying oh yeah wild wild things so let's talk yeah. about that because that's well, one of the wild things and that on the loose. <laughs> yeah that, that we realized that we had in common that right. that you as an Israeli and me as an Arab as an Egyptian like it's clear for us that the new Western liberal progressivism progressive uh, movement yeah. Pro progressivism yeah is is kind of derailing into absolute insanity <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what what can I tell you? Um, so, yeah. So I'm, I'm, now I'm, until now I'm agreeing. So what the yeah, what's yeah, the tell premise? Me, tell me about, so you live you live in Tel Aviv, correct? I do. So from what I understand, uh, I mean I haven't spent a lot of time in Tel Aviv, but Tel Aviv is like the San Francisco of of the Middle East. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the Tel Aviv bubble, like. Um, um, okay, I wouldn't. Call, you know what? I, I I really wouldn't call it the. Oh, or maybe. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I would. Uh, I would have called it the, the San Francisco. I may, I, maybe it's uh, like a combination of uh, a very, very small, you know, small micro uh, environment of San Francisco, New York yeah. City, Manhattan, okay. like kind of. A, yeah, yeah. A more, more calm, definitely. Um, so you want to hear about the Tel Aviv bubble? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me about the Tel Aviv uh, bubble first. Did you grow up in it? I did. I did. Um, tell, I'm Tel Aviv bred and buttered, and I'm born and raised. Okay. And how did you How did you end up not like? How did you end yeah, up not being how, part how of did, the bubble? How, how did I end up having a conversation with you and agreeing yeah, on stuff? Uh, yeah. Good question. Um, so yeah, I actually I grew up in Tel Aviv, and I grew up my uh, family is traditionally uh, politically on the left, except my mom, who I don't know until today what's her political views because she keeps them favorite. Yeah. And I, I give her I give her credit for that. But uh, I grew up uh, I grew up traditionally on the left, and uh, and actually as a teenager I inclined to go more and more towards the left. Uh, first mm -hmm. of all, you know, just you know the conversation at school and um, the the the, conver the way people were talking, and also as you know because I was from Tel Aviv, and my, people may not agree with me, which is a good thing. I'm, I'm all for that. Um, but because I grew up in Tel Aviv, I felt like I wasn't uh, I wasn't a part of the rest of Israel, and I didn't have like a common mm. unless people came from like a cubicle, you know. And that's, and that's, I mean, I I realized that I was communicating really well with people who are very you know they're educated and everything else, but but or not educated, but just it was like a very certain type elite. of people. Elite, yeah. one might say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and I and, and I I realized that when I was a teenager that these are the people that I have uh, that that I have a common uh, common ground that I have common grounds with. So uh, when I um, when I went to the IDF, they actually they wanted me to be a tour guide because uh, apparently I, that's my that you know that's my go-to and I do that until today. But because I knew I was probably going to do that for the rest of my life, I actually uh, marked on my preferences. I asked to be a social worker, and I was granted this privilege. <laughs> and not only did I become a social worker, because when they asked me why, I said, "Well, I want to really meet the Israeli society." Yeah. I said I wanted to um, I, I wanted to be a social worker, and then uh, they when I finished my training, they put me in IDF prison. So. Yeah, and wow. out of all the companies in the IDF prison, I was in like the highly, uh, highly guarded, uh, you know, very maximum security, uh, maximum security, high risk level uh, violence yeah. and, and stuff like that. So that I mean, and, and I got to take care of these people and also, you know, visit their families as a social worker, you go to visit the soldiers families and everything else. So I really got to meet the Israeli society. Right. And it was so then you know and it became more and more and more and more towards the left until things just stopped making sense mm -hmm. um where I, as so I, I i became more and more on the left but then i started um learning history and i started because wow that's of, very interesting i was on yeah. the left but I, I then i started learning history I, 
I, I didn't realize that, that that's what just came out of my mouth because um, you got the, the question got me thinking and I was like, when when was my, you know, when was my yeah. turn point? And I think it was a process, but it happened when I started learning history. Uh, yeah. I went, I did my studies in Haifa University because I wanted to go to the most left wing university I could find in, uh, in Israel. Uh, had 30, 35% uh, of the students are, are Arab Israelis. So, uh, and it's known to be on the left. Yeah. So, so you know, because I wanted, I didn't want to go to Bar Ilan, which was closer to home. And so, I, you know, I, I drove further, but I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to get Bar Ilan or Bar Ilan are right wing not cases, right? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm still from Tel Aviv. I can't. I, I mean, yeah. There's only so so far I can hey. go, right? Um, right. But but yeah, so I, w- I went there because I wanted to know the other side. Uh, I was grown up well. I was brought up with the Zionist narrative, and I wanted to understand, you know, where I got things wrong because things weren't weren't right. And right. the more I studied history, and the more I started thinking about things, I realized that um, that things are going wrong, and it's not necessarily because um, I mean, it's just there's only so much you can do. Right. Um, the other side has to take, take responsibilities as well. Um, and I started looking at which societies are doing better for themselves and which societies are doing worse for themselves, for, for, for the people, because what I care about is the people. So if I'm doing better and somebody else is doing worse, what's, I mean, and, and, and I'm bothered by that. So what can I do as a person to better that person? And then I realized that unless, so, so I mean, I, I realized that w- w- whichever action I as a, priv- as, as a privileged person would do unless the other person takes responsibility right. on their own decisions right that's not i mean but but then when i when i went back into the, you know talking to my peers to my 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 tel aviv left friends uh my left-wing friends i i, I realized that the, the um that the the conversation has shifted to uh from from logic and history to uh, a very um, a very self accusing and i i am all for self uh, yeah. you know self check and criticize yourself uh, i learned yeah. that I, I learned that at home and i still apply that well but, you're you're jewish so you can't help I, it. i'm not i'm not jewish i'm a jew <laughs> you're a Jew. Uh, I'm a Jew. I'm, yeah. I, I don't. I, I that I'm, I'm ins, I insist on that. I, I'm. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't like being called Jewish because I'm not yeah. Jew. I'm not Jewish. I'm a. I'm a Jew. You're a Jew. <laughs> right, right there. A Jewess yeah. to be uh, mm-hmm. to be exact. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and then I realized that it's just the conversation stopped making sense because it uh, it started compromising our own security it started compromising our own identity to try and work with um w- with another side who's not willing to help themselves and take responsibility on themselves you're and talking about the palestinians right i'm talking about the, uh, to be very exact i'm talking about the pna i i'm not talking about palestinians i'm talking okay. about the, the palestinian leadership okay uh, because Palestinians as people vary. Um, sure. so, so I'm talking about the, the Palestinian leadership and I'm talking about also about the Arab world in this case yeah. that, uh, that that's not not helping to push that uh, towards happening. And right. I, I, as, the more I studied history, the more I be- became interested in politics and then I said you know and, and just in the world you know in, in, in the world system of influences and to see what what influences what and then I realized that we are playing a game. I mean with all with all due respect to the Tel Avivian, self-accusation of, of you know how we are the terrible conqueror and yes I, I and and that that i want to say that being being a society that has an active military that has to work with controlling another population is damaging right. our society and i right. hate that i yeah. hate that this is the way that we're growing up but what it, this is the way that we that we are that we're living our lives but and not, what it does give us um is the ability to see what happens when you lose your identity and what happens when you lose who you are because right. now now as an israeli when i talk to people from europe or from the united states yeah. uh, I, I find that these because there isn't an immediate threat as much as israelis have um then this notion of knowing who you are knowing, your, knowing, who you are, knowing your history knowing your identity is lost yeah so 
that's uh, that, that's my two cents on, uh, on 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 the bubble and and what happened to me. Right, right. Wow, wow. That's amazing. It's amazing how how learning history had a great role, or maybe the primary role in balancing balancing your optics and and shifting you. Uh, it's it's amazing. So I want to ask you something about so the the people on the left or the progressives. And, mm -hmm. and that I, I started to notice very recently. Yeah. There is so much self-absorption. It's just unbelievable. Like, there is an insane amount of narcissism in completely, completely focusing on oneself. Like, you know, it's all about me. It's all about what I do, what I don't. There is, there is a complete dismissal of the agency of others, right? Uh, it's all of, like you see it in the Israeli left specifically. Everything is about, you know, and or in the example of the Israel left, you see it in the left everywhere. But it's about Israel. Israel is bad or Israel is good. Israel did. Israel didn't. Israel did. It's not the, the, the actions of others don't really matter. Uh, and and look at us. We're hero. We're moral. We're good. We're rational. We're the ones who are leading our people out of this dark pit of irrationality and and bigotry and evil nationalism and right. and and so on. So there's it 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 goes into both levels. So it, it's very as you said self accusatory or self condemning, right? Yeah. There's much self yeah. We're so bad, but also it's very self -con congratulatory in a lot of ways. Like of course, because and, and because, that and you know that's the funny part where I this this is where. Um, and, and this is the way that you know, we're talking about it. I understand the weird shift that happened because yeah. I felt as a, you know, as a Tel Avivian, you know, uh, Tel Avivian, Tel Avivian bubble girl yeah. <laughs> that I wasn't, I, I, you know, I wasn't really relating much and I wasn't, I, I wasn't uh, uh, just, I, I, I wasn't acquainted with the yeah. other parts of Israeli society. And then when I when I did go, you know, and I and I did, and it's 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 then when I realized that it's not that that you can't try to glorify yourself or try to get your self worth by yeah. saying, oh, I'm so you know, I'm so gracious, and I'm trying to help the other by not letting them help themselves. And I yeah. am trying. So it's, and 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 yeah, that's something that I feel very strongly is that that feeling of of and and I'm saying it's self-destructive because you are trying so hard to feel good about yourself. Right. You're trying so You're hard. Trying to so hard to, yeah. Yeah. So if you wake up in the morning and 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 that actually uh, connects me to something that I wanted to ask you about because okay, we we know there is the problem of anti-Semitism and delegitimization of Israel, and everybody say that Israel is so so bad. And so, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and our, like the Israeli occupation, which is another world I'm not agreeing with. I, guess, I don't think it's an occupation, but we'll, we'll discuss that at a different time. Um, but the, the, the Israeli regime over the, or, or control over the Palestinian population is corrupting the Israeli society. And uh, that, that I, I, I am willing to debate, but uh, it is actually the key to the peace in the Middle East. And... Mm -hmm. uh, this, this, this seniors, and, and, and so that's, that's, a, that I think is a result of two things. One is of, um, growing anti-Semitism on the outside, which we can talk about, uh, we can talk about momentarily, but then another thing is the fact that Israelis, I think, see them or Israeli left see itself as the center of all, of everything that happens. It's all because of us. It's yeah. all, it's all our responsibility. If we just... Right gave everything yeah. and if we would give enough and we, if we if we would if we compromise enough and we if, if yeah. we stop being so you know so connected to our heritage and so connected to where we come from and you know yeah. to our jewish identity if we just stop being so jewish for just yeah. a second uh then, yeah I mean, of know, course <laughs> of course they don't say it that way but that's primarily what they are what they are no, I'm, I'm telling you what i'm hearing <laughs> no, wait, wait. yeah oh okay that's good well uh, there, there are some, you know, they say even a, bro a, blo a broken clock is, is right, twice right twice a day. day. Right. Right. And, and they are, I mean, they are not completely not cases. I mean, they do have kernels of truth. Of course. It, yeah, the security situation is as, as, 
as damaging to Israelis as it is to Palestinians. Like there is something that is. And, yeah. And the fact that we need to be soldiers who control yeah. another population is corrupting who we are as a society. Yeah. I definitely the, there's agree something, with that. There's something spiritually damaging and just yes. psychologically damaging yes. about having yes. a 19 year old stand in a, in a checkpoint and search a 60 year old grandpa or grandma. There is something that's absolutely awful in this image. Think about you searching your old grandmother. Oh, oh, God, no! I mean, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, on that. It's yeah. Awful. But, but we know that this situation, this situation didn't exist before. Like for a very, very long time, Palestinians had absolute freedom of movement. It was Palestinian actions and choices that were ab that absolutely led to this. Uh, That's why I said it. My 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 issue is with the yeah. is with the PNA and not with uh, or yeah. not with Palestinian people. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, you you find this on the like on the conversation on the left. This element is completely absent, completely absent. Like Palestinian actions are completely absent. It's all about Israel. Israel is doing why Israel is doing this. Should Israel be? It's yeah. it's just narcissism. Like it's it's narcissism beyond who do you think you are. <laughs> and and like, and the, the sad thing is that it's also the big the, you know the 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 bigotry of low expectations. The sad bigotry. Yeah, of the bigotry. Yeah, it, yeah, and it hurts me personally. Like you know. It's hard for me personally when, when people do that. Like, yeah, maybe Arabs are not as wealthy and are not as technically savvy, but we're still humans with full agency. If we want to flip the table, yeah. if we want to flip the table on everybody, we will flip the table on everybody, even if we don't have the F-16s. Like, what what, like what is this notion this, that, that you are so superior that the other side is not capable yeah, of no, considering the yeah, consequences of their actions? Of their actions. It's, unbe it's, it's unbelievable. Right. You know, it's and and it's disrespectful. And unless, yeah, the Palestinians are Palestinian leaderships and are held accountable to, to their own actions, um, there's there's not not change is going to happen. But I want to also ask you: you spend a lot of time in the West, so and, and there are wild, a lot of differences. Wild West. The exactly. wild wild West, and there are a lot of differences between Israeli politics and Western politics. But what are talk talk to me about the similarities that you've seen between left. The left and the West and the left in Israel. Uh, okay, so there are similarities and there are things that are very different. Um, okay. So, uh, similarities, uh, I suppose, would be this narcissist and, and narcissistic um, uh, uh, quality uh, yeah. that that you're talking about. That that um, yeah, that you, you're you're starting because uh, because I see the actions that the left is is offering as non-practical um and as long as they're in the opposition they can yell and yell and yell but you know once it gets to the ground it was always the left um it was always the left-wing governments in israel that gave away territory that, sorry yeah. that didn't give territory for peace it was that the right wing gave territory for peace and always the left wing that that didn't uh it was the left you know the left is very strong when it needs to go to war there's a lot of, a lot of the times it's going to be under the left uh yeah. you know and, and under a left-wing leader so um, they're non-practical. Way yeah. if you want if if you want to maintain a, a Western lifestyle, nobody wants to neglect a Western lifestyle. Apparently, yeah. um, so it, so that's the similarity. Uh, the fact that uh, you 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 want and you want and you want and things have to be very just. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it comes to okay, when when it comes to the ground of of of, of you know practicality and doing that, nobody is you know. Nobody wants to make the the sacrifices uh, that have to be done, and quite justifiably, you know, because uh, because things like socialism take a very heavy price on those who uh, you know take a, take a very heavy price on society, and we see that in right. Israel uh, all the time. So, by the way, we see it so much that everyone who is capable um, and, and and actually making money is choosing to go to places that don't tax as much. Uh, yeah. And we have we have a problem of, of brains, uh, uh, you know, going to the West, and and it's uh, it's a big problem here because your tax yeah. money is going to so many different places here. Um, yeah. So these are these are similarities. Uh, the one thing, and and also the the the, the very high self awareness and the this thought that I just work on, you know, if if I you know if I'm, if I'm just be perfect enough. Yeah. Then everything is, uh, you know, everything is going to get better. But you're not actually working on on making yourself a better person because you're busy all the time. And how 
No, they, yeah. they are not working on themselves being better persons because they're perfect. They're just absolutely, they're absolutely perfect. They need to, what really kills me, whether like, and this is also one of the common, one of the common characteristics of people on the left, not all of them, but many of them mm -hmm. across, whether they live in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, or Tel Aviv, or right. some European city, is that they are so, everything is so beneath them, you know? Like everybody else is so beneath them, like under, like they are so high up there, and then they come. So you know, I'm brown, I'm an Arab, right? I'm an ethnic immigrant. So people immediately assume that I sympathize with more of a left worldview. Like immediately, there is no, there is no question, there's no suggestion. So people will sit and they'll be completely casually just, you know, including me in in this in this fantasy that they are living in. And tell me about how their how their own families, you know, their uncles or cousins or who live outside of the city, uh, you know, are so bigoted, such terrible people. Are so Israelis and, and Americans, they do the same thing. I sit with them. Right. Let's say an American who lives in San Francisco, but the family is originally from Nebraska or, or Kansas, uh, or or an Israeli who lives in Tel Aviv, but the family is from some Moshav or. Right. You know, they tell me, oh my God, those people out there is, are absolutely bigoted, are absolutely ignorant. You have no idea. Everybody else is so beneath them, right? Right. It's 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 an unbelievable amount because of they, they yeah, they can see, they really see the challenges, they really see the problems, and they yeah. really see how everybody else is wrong, and they're the only one who are right in how to fix the world, and that and that moral superiority is. Yeah. Uh, um, because and it's and you, you know what's uh, and and it's it's um, so uh, there's such an illusion there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it throws you off because on on one hand it's like oh I am so wrong therefore I am so right because yeah. it's it, it's the, it's that place where. Uh, because I can see my flaws and because right. I can see where we are as a society, where we went wrong. And, you know, I want to, I want to be on the right side of history. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, so that, so because I'm, because I'm so aware of my flaws and it's not my flaws, right? Cause I'm okay. I'm aware of my flaws there. Therefore I yeah. absolve myself. It's, the, it's okay. their flaws. It's not my yeah. flaws. It's theirs. No, it's, the, it's, it's the fault of the society that I live yeah. in. So I have, somebody else in my society to throw my flaws on but it's not really me because i'm aware and yeah. that's something that um that just and and also the the so here's the one thing that i would say that maybe separates some of the people on the israeli left than the people of uh of the the american left and uh, you know what? Not on the American level, but just in relation. I'm, I'm going to narrow it down with um, uh, not in, not in a general perspective, but then, but only when it comes to Israel, because um, and when it comes to Israel and it comes to the conflict, um, mm -hmm. is that when people from um, Israel, from the Israeli yeah. left, criticize what Israel does, and they do, and we do that a lot all the time. I criticize my government a lot too, all the time. Yeah. Uh, but when people from the Israeli left do it, I know that should the policies they think should be applied will be applied, they will be mm. there to suffer the consequences. Yeah. When, when you know, when stinky stuff hits the fan, mm -hmm. I know, and and when when security here is going to deteriorate, and when people are going to die in the streets, and when terrorism is going to be everywhere. And when we're going to have to do much, uh, much stronger military uh, operations and wars to keep ourselves safe, when that happens, they're going to be here to suffer the consequences. My, uh, my uh, uh, personal pain and also why I found myself uh, talking about Israel as something that I want to do for a living is because I feel that people who, who are talking about, that there is some sort of notion of taking Israel because it falls into some sort of into some sort of set of uh, set of identities uh, and set of, of ideas, uh, then you can criticize what Israel does and you can say what is what you think Israel should do and how wrong Israel is and what it does. Uh, but you're not there to suffer the consequences when people uh, when when children yeah. die in their beds and murdered yeah. in their beds and when uh, buses are blowing up in the streets and when soldiers are being killed in battle. You're not there to be a part of it, but in Israel, in everybody goes. They to the still military. they still do military service though, right? 
uh, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, they do. And I can say, you know, the funny thing is uh, they do military service. And I will say one uh, misconception is that uh, in Israel, if you uh, you can declare yourself a pacifist and then instead of going to the military, you can uh, sit in prison uh, for a while and say that you're a pacifist and then you don't want to serve. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, and, and you'd you'd think that uh, Israel, the, that the idea of prison is filled with, uh, you know, with, with pacifistic left wing people who are, don't yeah. want to serve. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> As somebody who's been to the IDF prison for uh, for a long time, uh, yeah. on the right side, the bars, but still, uh, I can tell you that uh, no one is sitting there because he's pacifistic and because he refuses to go to the military. They yeah. are usually declaring themselves mentally uh, 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 unstable, and that's how they get or oh, find find some sort of who, illness. Who are and that's they? How who are they? they? Uh, people who uh, who are on the left don't want to serve. Uh, they must be still a minority. Right, they must there, be a yeah. really small minority. They're, yeah, yeah, they're a minority. They're definitely a minority. Uh, and usually, that uh, what I what I found in conversations with people uh, and with people like that is that it comes from uh, it usually comes from a motive of I don't want to get you know I don't want to waste three years out of my life. Right. Uh, I'd rather do something else. So. Well, well, who would? <laughs> like nobody I, wants to waste. I was super eager to, uh, uh, you know, so we, spend uh, two, two, two years out of my life in military prison. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I also want to say, I also want to say, because I don't want us to sound like this is definitely what we're talking about. There is a generalization, but it's a generalization that we think is true based on the general attitudes of of most people that we, we meet from that uh, general direction. But there are people who are not like that. There are... I have, I have, uh, for example, I have an, a, you know, uh, a few. I mean, there's one that I can think of, really, an Israeli friend who's, you know, very liberal from the high tech bubble, but she's absolutely. I feel that she's sane and balanced, and she's always trying to be rational, and she actually hears my arguments and think about them. Uh, maybe also I get that privilege because uh, you know I'm, I'm an Arab, so maybe maybe You're that's so part privileged. Of it. You're so privileged. So I, I get the privilege of forcing people to actually try to listen to what I'm trying. I'm trying to say, not just dismiss it as like some right wing. Uh, so, but yeah, there are there are people who are balanced. There are people who are sane. And to be completely honest, every now and then, like it's not really consistent, but every now and then from the leftist major cultural bubble uh from the you know you will see an article that has some introspection that has some self-criticism we're being narcissistic this is too much where so every now and then that you hear voices truly and that's ultimately what you want like ultimately you do have you can't leave the room with one voice you do you will always need to have two voices to balance each other out right. but it's important that the other voice doesn't be because the other voice now lives in, in a fantasy land where it doesn't see or hear anything but their own voice anymore, and that's causing a huge issue. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 uh, I think that's a big difference between Israeli left and, uh, and um, um, American left, where mm -hmm. the, the conversation uh, here, well, the left here is doing very poorly at this point. Uh, I, I think that the, um, uh, Why? the security... Why? Uh, blue, blue and white is almost... Uh, yeah, but you're mistaken blue and white to be a uh, to be a left wing party, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it is not the actual. I mean, the left wing party is uh, Avoda Labour, and yeah. uh, they're uh, they they're the tra they're traditionally have been uh, the left wing party, and they crashed in the in the God knows in which elections. It's, it's a election system, uh, elections were going were going on uh, in the past two years, but uh, yeah, it's um, uh, labor or avoda used to be the traditional left, and they crashed uh, in the last elections and haven't been able. They actually they crashed so bad that they uh, came together with a far left uh, party called Meretz. Meretz, yeah, wow, yeah. Avodah Meretz. So yeah, yeah avoda Meretz. Um, and it, so, so that shows you that that whoever is on the left, and whoever's left on the left, uh, they're now uh, they, they're now getting together. Kaholavan is actually uh, more center, and it has right, it, it has both right and left on it, but it's more centered. And then there is the did, right. Did you think it's a, it's a left to center? Is it fair to call it left to center? It's uh, it's left to center with uh, sprinkles of right. 
Okay, uh, who's who's right yeah. in blue and blue and white? It's not the it's not the who's right. Uh, it's yeah. more it's more of a, of a notion. Uh, okay. I suppose I suppose they're not because if you would take um, what Kaholavan is 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 saying and offering to the to the people, and you'll take the Democratic Party and what they're uh, yeah. and what they're, they're running with, then Democratic the, 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 you know the Democrats are running left. And yeah. Kahol Kaholavan, so that's the difference. Uh, that's I think that's what happens when you live in Israel is uh, that you understand that you can't. Um, you have such challenges in terms of security, and yeah. also unfortunately the populations, Palestinian and Israeli, uh, mm -hmm. si since the aggravation with you know and, and since, since the aggravation in, in security and since the wall, uh, the populations are not as integrated anymore. Right. So. And and when they're not integrated, then you are getting more and more. Um, y y you're going more and more into your own identity, and they become the other, and they're the other that I don't know. Right. Uh, so, so that and 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 that so the people and and with that you have the fact that everybody goes to the military and everybody understands that we have some serious uh, security issues to deal with and defense issues to deal with and uh, and and one thing that people I think in the United States. Um, and differ from people in Israel is that uh, is the is the understand if you grew up here, you understand that um, everything that'll happen in terms of security is going to affect you personally. It yeah. is you who's going to the military. It is your father and your mother and your brother and your best friend and your cousin. Everybody's going to the military. And it is uh, your house that's going to be bombarded by uh, shells from uh, either missiles from Hezbollah or Qassam's and, and other missiles from Hamas, either a nuclear weapon from Iran. It's, it, you know, you have Hezbollah, the, the, the sixth uh, uh, missile superpower in the world sitting on our borders. You have Iran coming to the, you know, to the border with the Golan Heights. You had ISIS in both the Golan Heights and, 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 in, uh, and in Egypt. Like, like everything, everything is so close to home. Israel is tiny. So you understand that on security issues, you can't really be dismissive and say, oh, you know, this doesn't affect my day to day life. It is very much so. Right. So, uh, so people can't. I, I, I feel like unless you're in the bubble, uh, you can't. And, and you know, and you and you're trying very, very hard to get the world to like you. Right. And right. And, and, and these are the people who I get. You know, who I, I I believe are more on the left is that people who are trying to get the world to like them. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if they are trying to get the world to like them. Like, I mean, I'm. They they are in love with themselves, right? I, you're, you're talking. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure that's that's all it is. Because as an Israeli, something that I felt uh, yeah. all the, all the time, and that actually brings me to a question I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um, what what I was getting, what I'm getting all the time, and actually what drove me into um, into doing what I'm doing is that feeling that mm -hmm. that you're not to, you're you're sort of a uh, uh, persona non grata. Uh, mm -hmm. be because of who you are, because identity right. matters so much, right? right? Then, as an as an Israeli who was a social worker in a military prison, right, right, I I felt I, I you know people keep seeing me as uh, when when they meet me one on one. First of all, as an Israeli, and that's not just for me. You always being asked, and you always have to explain your country, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. always have to explain where you come from. Right. And because most people don't have, I mean, most people here live their lives. So right. most of us can't, you know, can't really engage in a, in a debate or in an right. argument. Uh, and then, and, and everything you get, people get from the media, right. you know, they shoot at people who come from Israel. And then people from Israel realize like, oh my, and the people who travel and the people who speak good English and the people right. who, you know, who want to get the world to like them. Right. Uh, right. Uh, hmm realize all of a sudden that oh, oh my god you know I'm, I'm you know we're doing something terribly wrong here uh that you know everybody that's, everybody that's everyone's telling me i'm drunk okay. I, I better go wash my face but you're I, right I, I, and i actually have to say that i heard somebody say a much better sentence i'm giving credit to my my professor yohan ben -Ami. Yeah. uh i told him once well if so many people tell you you're drunk you better go wash your face uh, and he said well if two people are telling you drunk you better check that you're not seeing double Mm. Um, <laughs> that's really good well yeah i think i think you're right i mean the, but the you know there's so much cowardice like it's a cop out 
Like there's so much cowardice when people, okay, they're very hostile, they attack Israel, they attack Israel. So your reaction would be, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Israel is, is really bad and, and doing a lot of things. Like it is the most comfortable position to be in, right? Yes, it is. Like, it is. like defending Israel is, is strong and powerful and disproportionately more powerful than the Arabs. Right. In the weird cultural moment that we are, that power is immediately incriminatory, like it's incriminating. The moment that somebody has power, you're guilty. No, no right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Defending Israel becomes uncomfortable. You know, oh, it's, a, very it's an uncomfortable position. Trust me, it's a full-time job. 